the session today. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Marin, for this nice introduction and for doing the housekeeping first. Um, I have to say I'm not really familiar with Blackboard that much, but it seems to be a really a nice going uh, platform. Um, Andreas and I are delighted to be here today and uh, to be able to tell you a bit more about the project that we are currently doing in Germany. Uh, but the main focus really will be on the aspects, aspects of the project that might be transferable to a UK context or beyond um, the UK. And um, we would really like to sort of foster international collaboration with, with the ideas that, or with the pool that we're presenting here today. Andreas, could you actually um, share the slides? Um, because, yeah, there we are. Okay, right. So, um, matching expertise with higher education institution staff training and development demands. Um, we are going to present the expert in and pool flying experts. And I do apologize for the flying experts here. Well, in the sense that um, flying experts might remind you of flying doctors or something like that. It's just that flying experts seem to be a good English name for a very German project. Um, so if we talk about the FE pool or flying experts pool here, it's not about further education. It has more to do with higher education at this stage. But of course, who knows? Um, there might be aspects which might actually tr be transferable to um, the FE sector, the, the further, further education sector as well. Um, we'll see. Okay, Andreas, would you like to say something about yourself first? Yes, I make it very brief. Um, hello, um, I'm delighted uh, to join you all here today. I'm Andreas, I'm an historian by trade. But in this context, I'm the administrative uh, coordinator of this project, um, which Martina and I are working in together. And I'm here today uh, joining Martina and to help her out and to fill in some background information um, for the project. Okay. And my name is Martina Emke, and I'm the coordinator of the pool of experts in digitally enhanced uh, teaching and learning in higher education called Expertin Pool Flying Experts. So, um, what's the problem with staff development? Um, of course, there are a number of problems um, with staff development, or there can be a number of problems with staff development, but the ones that we would like to concentrate here and point out, because they are relevant to um, the pool of experts, is actually um, give you a bit of background why it was created in the first place. So as we all know, um, there have been rapid uh, technological changes, um, especially uh, in the past two years or so, um, and not at least due to, to the COVID-19 pandemic, which require teaching staff to, de to develop their teaching skills, and in particular their online teaching skills. Um, at a very fast um, um, pace. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic um, has acted as an accelerator for change. So some of the movements um, towards more online teaching that we actually saw before COVID-19 have been obviously accelerated through the pandemic. And it's very likely given the increasing unfortunately, increasing numbers of incidents um, all over the world um, that this, um, th this, this challenge that we're facing um, is actually going to persist for, for some time. Um, at the same time, we've been seeing decreasing staff training and development budgets, and not just in Germany. Um, from what I've read in, in, in the literature, um, it seems that all over the world, a staff training and development budget, or in most parts of the world, have been actually decreasing rather than increasing because money has been dedicated to other purposes in HEI to, to accommodate the changes that, that um, the, the HEI sector is, is, um, um, is going through at the moment, um, mainly having to do with the digitalization. And of course, budget restrictions are always a general impediment for um, targeted development offers. What do we mean by targeted? Um, the idea is not so much that um, staff training and development 
offers are being made to the staff. But the question is, does your teaching staff actually need? What kind of training and development offers do they actually need? And are these offers available to the staff? And at what cost, possibly? Um, so in general, staff training and development offers are planned and organized in advance. Um, but this also means that there might be a possible mismatch between current staff development needs and available offers. Just to give you an example, um, in Germany, for instance, the demand for um, uh, development offerings in, in, in um, hybrid teaching um, or in online teaching have increased enormously, as, as, as I know has been the case in the UK, for instance. Um, but the question is, where where are these offers and and these offers need to be made now but because um the the um the training plans were created about half a year ago or even longer than that there might be a possible mismatch between the needs the training needs and the offerings that are possible now what's the conclusion here so faced with multiple challenges in preparing their teaching staff adequately for digitally enhanced teaching, um, higher education institutions are in need of professional development offers that meet their specific tra training demands in timely and flexible ways. And this is actually again the background or this is the, the specific problem um, that the, the, the creators of the pool had in mind um, when they decided to actually set up the pool. And um, in the next uh, slide, Andreas will actually, um, no, the next slide, sorry. Um, the next slide is what's in it for, today, what's in it for you today. Um, I, was, I was just thinking that in the next slide, we will talk to you a bit more about the project itself. But first of all, let's just go back and see what's in it for you today. So what can you get out of this webinar? Um, Andreas and I are not so much here to talk about our project, but more about actually trying to encourage um, international collaboration and trying to um, in, um, give, you, give an opportunity for, for thinking about how this pool could actually be uh, taken forward um, for international collaboration. Which aspects might be transferable to um, your context or how might they be changed? This is basically what we would like to um, do today. So this is this is a very, and we hope this will be very, a very interactive um, webinar, not so much a presentation. So what's in it for you today? Um, of course, you will need to hear about the pool of experts um, that we have created. Um, and you need to be able to understand how this pool currently works in a German context. Then we would like to encourage you to think about the elements uh, which might be transferable to a UK context and to jointly develop um, with us first ideas to build an international network of experts in HEI teaching and learning, I should say. Um, to that purpose, we have also created a Padlet, which will be made available a bit later on, and we will give you time within the webinar to actually post your own ideas, give feedback, and um, hopefully this Padlet will be a good um, sort of testing ground and also something that will stay for 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 um, for us to document the activities that we've been talking about today. Okay, over to you now, Andreas. Yes, for the background of the project. Um, as first and foremost, um, as Martina mentioned, uh, staff fun uh, training funding is decreasing. So we are very lucky uh, to have secured quite a large amount of money for our project. We are funded by the uh, Ministry of Culture and Science of the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, our general focus is training um, higher education staff um, in uh, digital matters and assi um, assisting with developing associated skills. How are we in general hoping to accomplish this? The, the project has four main parts, which you can see in the presentation. 
or components, um, which are developed and implemented by 13 higher education institutions in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. This is quite important because in Germany, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, because of federal federalism, we have quite um, high barriers for cooperation and higher education institutions like universities normally walk, uh, work very independently. So um, one of our main tasks is um, to get 13 um, higher in, um, education institutions in sync and work to those four components of the project. But what are those four components? First and foremost, we have the digital teaching lab, um, which is tasked with developing a genuine, genuine new um, teaching and um, de um, staff development program for all 42 um, higher education institutions in North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, the, pro um, the, uh, the program Teaching in the Digital Age is currently um, under development and will feature short formats, long formats, and self-learning materials, um, which will be um, open educational resources, resources. But as long as it is under development, we need our um, flying experts pool. Secondly, we have the community of practice. And the aim here is um, to pr generally promote um, exchange between higher education staff. On the one hand, this means um, giving all people um, the opportunity to talk to each other, uh, other um, to people who are in our development, uh, development, I'm very sorry, um, in our staff development program, Teaching in the Digital Age. But on a broader sense, um, it's our aim to establish um, a working network of higher education staff in North Rhine-Westphalia concer um, concerning our topics. Thirdly, we have the pool of experts, which Martina will explain in greater detail in a moment. And finally, we have what is um, very, We have a quality um, assessment and um, now I'm going to start over. On the, uh, on the presentation, you see very slightly mentioned EFAQM and this is our quality assessment and evaluation um, team, which is working on for all three components. So far for the general scope, Martina, back over to you. Uh, you still muted? So I am. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andreas. Um, so the question here is how does the uh, um, FE pool work? And as I said earlier on, uh, FE stands for Flying Experts Pool here. Um, as you could see from Andreas's um, short introduction, this is one component of a very large project, which consists of four components altogether. So the pool of experts um, is currently a website, basically, which I will show to you in a minute. On this website, um, you will see um, the areas of expertise um, that um, the, the, the experts can actually cover and in which they can offer workshops or, um, or, or um, consultancy um, offerings um, or inputs, for instance. Um, before we come to that, how, what, how does it typically work? How do the experts and the AGI in North Westphalia find together? Because this is basically essentially what I'm doing for the project. So let's say um, an AGI would like to offer their teaching staff a workshop or a targeted input or a consultancy that they 
cannot realize with their existing means. Let's say this could be in, for instance, gamification or in um, hybrid teaching. In this case, um, somebody from the EHEI would get in touch with me as the coordinator of the pool to discuss the options that they have. So they would actually um, request a workshop, for instance, in hybrid teaching. And we would discuss which experts might be suitable for the particular context in which this workshop should be given. Um, then the coordinator checks the availability of an expert and the coordinator, or well, that's me obviously, um, would put the, the um, HEI in touch with the, the experts. Um, in the next step, the organization and the content of the offers would be, or of the offer of the hybrid teaching workshop, would be negotiated between um, the person from the HEI and the expert. So this is nothing that has anything to do with, with me, so to speak, but it's more between, between um, the HEI and the expert. Why? Uh, well, it's simply because um, the actual workshop will take place at a particular HEI. So to have the coordinator um, being part of these discussions wouldn't really make sense because the pool does not organize the event. The HEI and the expert together um, organize the event and the workshop itself takes place at the HEI. The coordinator um, would then say, for instance, um, that the HEI and the expert have agreed on the date for the workshop, the content, the target group, and everything else that has to do with the actual offering. Then the HEI would turn back to, or would get back to the coordinator, to me, and ask for the contract to be issued. And this, again, would be part of the coordinator or as part of my work um, to actually issue the contract. And after the workshop has taken place, um, the invoice, the expert's invoice, would be settled via the pool. So in other words, I also deal with the invoicing. So from the HEI, the advantage is that they don't read they do, they don't have to find a suitable expert for a particular training or staff development offering this is something that is done by me um, they don't have to check the availability of this expert that's done by me and um, they don't have to pay for the expert that's done by the pool so they don't have to do anything they don't have to, to, to deal with the invoicing, um, something that um, a lot of um, HEIs that would like, that would rather like to concentrate on actually negotiating the content and having, you know, discussing content, discussing how this workshop will be facilitated, how it might be targeted so that it meets exactly the needs of their st teaching staff. This is the really sort of enjoyable um, part of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the workshop or of, of the job of the HEI. But um, when it comes to, to invoicing and when it comes to contracts, um, most HEI are not so interested in that. So I take away that part of the work as well. So this pool has been operational since January 2021. And um, we have experienced um, quite a high demand for the services of the pool. So currently we have um, 45, um, um, no, um, 54, sorry, 54 experts um, and two are from the UK. We have had um, 55 requests from HEI and we have issued 47 contracts so far. So to explain the difference between the 47 and the 55, um, the remaining difference is still in negotiation, um, but contracts will be 
issued um, for all of the requests. Then um, staff development offerings. So how many workshops um, targeted input consultancies have taken place? 32 so far. And the feedback that we have received um, from the HEI has been really, really positive. And all in all, we've had um, four, 440 participants um, who participate, participated in, in, um, in these offerings, which have been jointly um, organized. Um, let me now show you um, the website of the Flying Experts. And for that, I will actually share my screen. Um, right. Let me, oops. Can you see the screen now? No. Just Currently okay. not. Okay, let me just let me just get back. Um, right. How can I how can I share screens here? I thought um, I could do that if easily. You go to where it says share content, it should give you the option second from the top to share a screen. Um, right. So near the chat or the participant list. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Can you see it now? Wonderful. Okay. Um, so sorry. this is the. F I don't. I can't see it. Um, Andreas, can you see it? No, I can't. Um, I'll try to um, share the uh, screen. I have it at the ready, I think. Um, oh, that would be wonderful. I can't no say problem. why it's not working here. Yeah? Is it working now? That's the big question. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, I can see it. Can everybody so see it? Yeah, all good. Yeah. You have okay, to tell me now, wow. Martina, because I'm um, partially blind. No, that's, that's, perfectly, that's perfectly, perfectly Tell me where fine. to go. I, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, no, I'll just uh, run over the, the, the website very quickly. So um, this website is uh, currently, and I do apologize, but it's currently in, in German only, um, but we're working on a translation, and I hope that will be available soon in 2022. Um, what you can see in the upper part of the website is the offers. Um, so it's basically just a quick or brief description of what the pool does and how it works. And then we've got the offers for the HEI that I've just explained. And we also have um, the offer for the experts themselves because the offer is that they could actually, they can actually post their short bios um, on the website and I will show you one of the bios a bit later. Um, so which gives actually the experts um, another op opportunity to, to, to show their expertise and um, to um, attract um, the attention of HEI not just in Northern Westphalia but um, in other parts of, of Germany as well because I've, I've already heard that some of the experts have received um, requests from, from AGI outside um, Northern Westphalia um, for, their, for their services. Um, the, the, the thing currently, or the restriction that we currently have is that only AGI from Northern Westphalia can actually request the services of the pool and um, we, and, and the pool will, will actually pay for, for the expert's fee. If there is an HEI from outside Northern Westphalia who would like to, or who seeks the services of one of the experts in the pool, then unfortunately at this stage, we cannot pay for the services of this expert. But this is one of the things that we hope to, to remedy in the future one way or another. Um, next, you'll have uh, the map, um, which actually shows you where, where, where the experts are located. And if you um, draw the map exactly, if you en enlarge this slightly, you can see, um, or oh no, make it smaller actually. That, there we go, that's fine, uh, Andreas, thank you. Um, you can see that we currently have two experts in the UK and one actually in Austria. Uh, so these are our sort of international experts that we currently have, but we hope to have and to attract more in the, in the future, obviously. Underneath the map, you have the um, themes um, which we currently offer 
or where the, the experts have their expertise. And uh, you can see um, podcasts, for instance, some of the some of them, even if you don't if you don't um, uh, know any German, some of, of, of the themes will be familiar to use podcasts, for instance, or gamification um, or even something like um, augmented reality and virtual reality. And these are um, these these are topics that are very, um, very high in demand in Germany. At the moment, and um, I'm, we, we are quite happy that we have a few experts who can actually offer targeted input or uh, workshops or um, or um, uh, consultancy services in these topics. Now, if we go to uh, Chrissy Neranzi's profile, uh, Andreas, could you please type in Chrissy Neranzi or look for her profile? Uh, you could also do this via the, the map, obviously, but there we go. If you could click on her profile, please. Um, it's a new tab. I'm sorry. It opened. Oh, it opened, but we can't see it because it's a new tab. I'm changing okay, sorry. it. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, that's these are the joys of technology when you change uh, tabs. <laughs> sorry for that. It's open. Yeah, there we go. So, so you could actually see um, Chrissy has um, uh, has given a workshop um, for um, the Heinrich Heine University in Germany about creative um, creative methods in higher education, and we've actually um, written um, an article about this, um, which will appear soon, um, and which will we will share with you as well as soon as it's published it's in it's in it's it's in english so um uh, you might be interested in in and in it's open access as well so you might be interested in reading a bit about her experience as a facilitator um of a workshop um uh, and uh, seeing the university perspective and also seeing the coordination perspective because we try to capture all three perspectives in one article there um, so each the, the, the profile consists of the picture and then of three um, thematic areas um, that this expert has an expertise in. Um, and then uh, underneath the three um, thematic areas, which you'll see in bullet points here, you will have a short vita of the expert, which gives HEI an idea of what the, the expert special, specializes in and to see whether this particular expert might be might be might be the right expert for uh, the particular offer that an HEI has in mind. Okay, thank you very much. So um, uh, we can we can actually stop um, sharing um, the screen at this point and maybe return to the PowerPoint because in the next step after after showing you um, this website. Um, and I will actually post the website in the chat as well. So something I should have um, thought about a bit earlier, but it's, it's not too late. So you can always go back there and see um, what it actually looks like, even though it's in German. Um, in the next step, we would like to give you um, time for asking you questions because we are aware that this is very dense content, content that we have presented here. And um, you, might, you might have some, some questions at this stage that we would like to take before we then move on to, to um, jointly thinking about this pool could be extended or which aspects might be transferable to a UK context. So basically, um, the stage is yours now participants if if you if you have a question or if you um if you would like to post your your question in in the chat if you're more comfortable with that uh, then we would happy to answer your questions there how did you identify the experts yeah very good one um first of all um we started with our own networks um of experts to be honest because we had to start from somewhere um, within the pool, within the project, we had discussions about which um, or where we where we saw uh, most demand uh, for the development offers. So which topics 
would be in high demand, for instance, or where what sort of topics are interesting for, for teaching staff at the moment. And one of the things um, was actually, as I said, hybrid teaching, for instance, and we, we drew on our networks first, but we've now come to a stage where we find experts through recommendations, for instance, um, or where experts or potential experts actually turn to me and sent me an email and say, okay, um, this pool is really interesting. Can we discuss whether I might fit actually, or my, my expertise might actually fit in this pool? And then we'll talk about this. And, and it's never just a question of sending an email and, and, and um, you automatically you are being put or, you, or your profile will actually appear in the pool. It's always a, a, a process of negotiation and, and, and about discussion. Um, with the expert, but also with the HEI, because the the sort of the the success factor, the biggest su success factor, is actually in matching the 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 need of the HEI and the expertise of the expert as 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 well as possible. Um, how do your experts share the learning practice or insights from the sessions they deliver across the many different HRs and feed that back into the pool? Well, actually, this is something that is not currently happening, uh, Jen, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry to say so, but at the moment, um, the, 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 this pool of experts is, um, is just um, for matching purposes. It's not a platform for teaching and learning in itself. It just contains information which HEIs find useful for finding a suitable expert for their particular need and for experts to, 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 to publish their expertise, basically. Um, and this is, this is what the pool covers, because as I said earlier on, um, the workshop itself takes place or yeah, or the organization expert and the, and the workshop itself, for instance, or the, the consultancy or the input. Um, Everything that has to do with the, with, with, with the offering itself um, happens between the HEI and the expert. And obviously, HEI have their own platforms um, and they use what platforms they find suitable. Um, one might, is there anything? One yeah, might add, so it is, of course, possible for the experts um, to join us in our community of practice, which is Currently, um, the technological part is under development. We are um, in the midst of sorting a lot of things out. out. But those um, kind of um, um, exchanges you mentioned um, are uh, of consideration for the community of practice. And we would, we would be very happy to integrate those as soon as we are uh, ready to accomplish this. Yeah. And something else we might want to add at this stage. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really interested. Thanks, um, um, Maren. It, this is exactly what we are interested in as well, how to deploy or scale this approach. And one other thing that we that we should mention at this point um, is actually um, that um, North London's failure is currently developing an OER platform. A really big one where where HEI can actually um, publish all um, uh, all content that has been created, for instance, in in one of these collaborative um, offerings. Um, uh, they could actually publish their OG, um, OER on, on on the platform. But again, um, this would be exclusively for for uh, HEI from Northern Australia, and we are thinking much beyond that, and we are not particularly happy to be <laughs> to be honest that um, this these these offerings are currently restricted to to northern Westphalia only and this is this is this is why we would like to open it up and this is this is our main interest here and this is why we're here today um, Alt has um, a, a directory of experts members and we have been thinking about this a lot yes yes so so if there we, we would be very happy to to carry on with uh, our this this discussion that we started here today with this webinar um, um, Maren with you or or other members from the Association for learning technology to see what we can what sort of ideas we can jointly come up with 
So maybe as a first step, um, it would be a good idea now to move to the Padlet and to give the particip participants of this um, webinar the chance to actually put their first impressions, their, their, their feedback, their, um, their ideas on the Padlet. Um, so uh, let me just, let me just um, give you, post the link here to the Padlet as well. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Andreas. You you were a bit quicker than I was. <laughs> okay, so if you if you go to this Padlet, you can see on the left hand side, you know, feedback ideas. Um, then important aspects for network formation. So which aspects do you think are important that we should should consider, especially especially um, when we think about the how how this pool of experts could be transferred to the UK or beyond. Um, so what barriers uh, to network formation come to your mind and what are your first ideas how we could actually start um, discussing or our, or, you know, building and not, not start discussing, we're discussing this already, but how we could actually, um, what would be the next steps for, for building an international network of experts? That would be very interesting. And we'll, we'll give you, we'll, we, we'll give you, um, five minutes now or so uh, where you can actually post something yourselves because I think um, this, this, these ideas need a bit of consideration. Thanks, Martina. Thanks, Andreas. Um, would you want me to share the the Padlet um, so that we can watch it kind of move um, move around, or did you just want us to um, have five minutes of quiet time and then we come back? Um, I thought I thought we would have. Uh, by all means, um, please do share the Padlet so that we can see what if if somebody posts something. Um, I've already logged into the Padlet, so I could actually move posts or something if that was necessary. Um, but yeah, that that would be nice if we could uh, share the Padlet here. Yeah, great, thanks. Great, so hopefully no one minds you'll be able to see me type, but yeah, please do join in. Um, it's 10 past now, so we've got five minutes for this activity and then we'll all come back um, before the end of the session. So thanks very much, Martina and Andreas. Um, we'll, we'll let everybody to contribute now. Wonderful. Thank you, Maren. Thank you. Okay, so there's two minutes remaining. Um, if you haven't yet, please do contribute.
uh, but we don't really want to put you under pressure. As I said, we, we know this is um, something really new and we know it's it's a quite dense context and, and quite a lot of content that we presented here today. So um, um, by all means, this, this Padlet will stay open uh, for everyone to post their um, ideas later and also um, for future discussions. discussions. So if you, if you um, don't know how to put your ideas or to your, your feedback at the moment, you can always do so later. So don't, please don't feel that, that you are under pressure to post something now. Right. Um, Maren, Andreas, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think um, it's time now to come to a close, maybe. Sounds great. I think we've had quite a few comments come in via the Padlet. I can see that. That's fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so, um, Andreas, would you like to start with and show us the last slide maybe of the PowerPoint? Yes, and this is one the moment, last, please. The last, slide, the last slide that we have for today, but hopefully not the, not the last time that we are going to talk about the pool with you. Okay, that was our exactly. So, so what's next? Um, that is basically the question here. As I said earlier on, the Padlet will stay um, for for further discussions, and um, I we would like to invite anybody interested in taking um, taking this pool of experts forward or taking ideas for 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 building a, f a future network, and of course. Um, associated um, to questions of how to to build um, an international pool of networks, uh, um, uh, <laughs> pool of networks, how how to build an international um, uh, network of of experts, is actually a question of funding. So in the next step, um, when we start developing our ideas, it would certainly be interesting to think about funding as well because. Um, as I explained earlier on, one of the crucial aspects of this pool um, is that the experts' fees are borne by the pool, um, which is an, an incredible advantage for HEI and, of course, for the experts because there is security in, in payment there. Um, but um, if we, we if we talk about um, you know how we can take this forward, then we it would be interesting to think about um, funding opportunities um, for such a network. Okay, Andreas, any final words here, at least at this stage for today? Yeah, a big thank you is in order, I think, for having us. Um, we would very much um, like to hear from you in the future, not only concerning uh, the uh, pool of experts, but but all topics you might 
think worth of um, cooperation and that's all I have. Exactly. And one last word from me is, um, as I said, the, the, the Padlet will stay with you, but we will also um, provide our slides. So you've got our um, contact details, if anything. Thank you very much, Kathy. Yeah, I, I, um, I really do hope that um, this, our, our pool will expand, the project will expand, and um, what's even more important that we can foster international collaboration um, with with this idea um, or something that you know that this idea gives rise to future international collaborations because that would be really great as i said before we are very much interested in sort of opening up uh, the pool and not restricted to a particular regional state or a country thank you very much Maren. thank you very much for having us um, to the Association for Learning Technology. That's it um, from us. Thank you.